Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you very much for, for joining me today. Um, my name is Amy Andrews. I'm the Head of Resourcing Solutions here at Jobs Go Public. Uh, for the next half an hour, we will be talking about how not to lose good candidates during your application process. Um, so thank you very much for, for joining me today. Um, I am in a different location. If anybody's been on my webinars previously, I'm normally at home, but today I'm in the office. So I'm trying to get as much, uh, get no distractions at all through the webinar, but thank you very much for joining me, like I, I say. So just to give you a bit of a, a heads up, really, uh, Jobs Go Public is changing. Um, the change is coming. You will see lots of information come through from us um, over the next uh, week or two weeks coming through um, with our new brand. So um, keep an eye out for that information. Uh, if you follow us on Jobs Go Public on LinkedIn or Twitter or any of social media, you will see um, quite a lot of information come through there. Um, so keep an eye and watch this space for a brand new brand. So today we'll be setting out um, expectations before the hiring process begins, um, looking at your outlook to recruitment and how that could be changed, um, approaches to candidates quickly, um, how to communicate your values and sell the role through the, the process, and also keep candidate relationships warm because that is quite an important um, feedback from um, candidate feedback that we get within our organisation. So just for anybody who doesn't know, like I mentioned, my name's Amy Andrews. I've been in recruitment for, for many, many years. Um, I've only ever done public sector recruitment. Um, I have worked with many organizations within the public sector for um, many, many years. Um, and my role within Jobs Go Public is to help organizations to provide a solution, whether it be uh, marketing, um, advertising, it could be down to recruitment. So I'm, we're here to help. Um, and obviously we wanna be champions for the public sector because it's quite an important organizations to work for. So just to start today's webinar, um, as I mentioned, it's about setting clear expectations. I think from some of the feedback that we get from candidates is they're unsure what the process is. Um, it's really important that you set clear expectations. I do it with my team. I do it in many aspects of my life, and I'm sure you do it within your one-to-ones within your team. But also, it's a good idea to set expectations with candidates when they see an advert. So giving them the whole idea of what's going to be the process and what's the situation with, is within that um, advertisement. Um, it increases the chancing of, of making a good hire and also can save time and resources. Um, I'm sure for hiring managers on the call today, um, having um, candidates not being available for interview um, can be quite um, frustrating for managers and also for candidates as well. So outlining the hiring time, timeline is, is fantastic. So giving information about interview dates, um, what the process is going to be. Is it going to be a uh, one-stage interview? Is there a two-stage interview? Is there three? Is there panels? Um, is there going to be a presentation in the interview? Can be really helpful for a candidate, um, especially to know what, what they're too expecting. Um, and also setting clear requirements for the role. Um, in a couple of weeks time, there will, we will be doing a, a webinar about advertisements um, and how to capture some great information for your adverts. Um, but it's really important that you think about when you are advertising your roles, um, think like a candidate, would you apply for that job? Is there things in that advert that you'd want to apply for? Is there something you're unsure about? Um, it's all about being really honest and open about those, those roles and giving candidates an idea of what the, the, the organization is like, but also what the process is gonna be like. Um, and also, um, is there someone to speak to? Um, we see it quite regularly with some organizations that there's no point of contact. Um, I think for a role um, where you are, it's it's it may be a mixture of, of roles or maybe a, a big project that you're doing it's really important that there is some information about um someone to speak to i think that's really important to engage with candidates early on because if someone wants to apply for a job and they're a little bit nervous applying or aren't too sure having contact details on there about who to call have an informal chat have a confidential chat because um some people might already be in roles themselves so it's really important that they do share that information um and also please do try and avoid when you're writing your adverts um to have an exhaustive list of must-haves um i would suggest um 
having maybe two or three or five maximum points as to what you're looking for, for from your candidates rather than have an exhaustive list. Um, I read an article a little while ago and I had a chat about a client with an organisation that, um, for example, women want to satisfy every single um, point on that job des description rather than men will tend to apply even if they meet two or three points. So it's something to think about whether you're um, putting together an advertisement for your, for your roles. Um, I'm just going to put a little poll up here for us, um, just to gather um, some information from you, if my computer wants to work. Um, I'd be really keen to find out from the group today um, about candidate feedback. Um, so I'm just going to launch this little um, poll um, asking if you ask candidates for their feedback. So I'm going to put a poll out there. You should see it come up on your um, Zoom. So please do fill it in if you can. So there's gonna there's quite a few answers there. There's been high points and low low points. So I'm gonna add that poll. So it's pretty. Oh, there's some more answers coming in there. So majority of people um, on the call today do. I'm gonna share the results. So 38%. Um, say not at all on this call today, and also 38% say sometimes. So 23% of you out there today do ask candidates feedback throughout the interview process. Um, I think from having um, feedback, it's, it's really important. I think feedback, um, especially um, as a recruiter, we gather feedback from our candidates and our clients. Um, and it's really important that if you don't know the this, this situation or the pro problem, it can be really daunting to find that out. I think it's whether it be good feedback, bad feedback, indifferent, I think it's really important that you do gather candidates' feedback throughout. Um, we're working with a client at the moment where at CV submission stage, uh, we ask for candidates' feedback. Uh, we also ask candidate feedback at interview stage um, and also once they've had an interview. So it is something really important to do. Um, so yeah, asking and feedback. So in terms of, of, of feedback and moving on from that, so changing your outlook to recruitment. Out, recruitment can be um, not, for me, recruitment is my job. That's what I do. I find good people for the public sector and that, that's my job and that's what my team do. Um, if you're a manager and you're trying to recruit, recruitment won't be your day job. You will be more concerned about your social care team, um, how many void properties you've got within your, your council. It could be to do with procurement. It could be anything. Recruitment is probably only a small, small part of your job. And I'm very much aware that within um, HR teams, again, recruitment is a very small part of your job. You might have things like disciplinaries, you might have hot, hot issues with uh, learning development, you might have organizational designs. So there's lots of things that encompass that. Um, it's really important to take a step back and reassess your outlook onto recruitment. Um, we come across clients who are desperate to get some staff and they, they really want to work quickly to recruit. However, our experience and candidate's experience of working quickly can be sometimes a little bit different to a manager who may have um, a thousand plates spinning in the air trying to, to do other things. So it's really important that you do make time in your busy schedules to do recruitment because I think getting the right people in at the right time is really important. And obviously it does waste time, resources, energy um, and money if for whatever reason, candidates fall out. And obviously that's what we're trying to prevent to, to today in today's webinar. So reflect on your current perspective. Um, are you looking to hire because you've had um, a, a growth in your team? Have you had extra funding that you need to have more heads in? Um, look at the candidate experience. I always say to managers, put yourself in the candidate's shoes. Would you apply for that job? Would you be interested in working in that organization? Do they sell to you what is good about working for organizations? So it's really important that you do focus on the candidate experience because yes, you're interviewing them and you want to find the best person um, to work within your organization. But also from a candidate's perspective, they really want to make sure that they're going to be looked after working for you. They want to make sure that they've got a good team, they share common values and experience, um, and they want to be looked after. And not only are um, can you interviewing candidates, but they're also really interviewing interviewing you. Um, and people who have a bad experience tend to talk. You might 
uh, worked in the public sector for a long time. Uh, people move around. Um, there's no denying that people move on and they work for different local authorities or different housing associations or different um, NHS trusts or, or whatever. It's really important that you do have a really good experience because actually um, bad experiences people tend to share, especially things like on social media. Um, we're in a generation now where everyone uses uh, Facebook and Instagram and LinkedIn to have, to share good and bad experiences. So it's really important that you do focus on the candy experience. Um, so staying updated on industry trends, your network is probably the strongest. You're the specialist in your area, whether you be in a HR background, finance, procurement, um, building control. You are your expert and I, I obviously of, often have conversations with clients and that's like well I can't find anybody we can't do this reach out to your network have conversations with people open doors um you may have been to an event you might have been to the CIPD festival of work to make make um networking you might have been to the PPMA event that was held back in um April so these are all sort of um events where you can stay updated on in an industry and industry trends and also we tend to share information about um candidate data and you'll see more of that coming in the next couple of um, couple of weeks um collaborate with hiring managers um it's really important to get second of second opinions work together if you're working on similar roles work together um and also leveraging technology technology is really important you've probably heard of of chat gpt um lots of candidates are using it lots of students i know are using it to, to, to try and get full through their exams but it's really important that you leverage technology because it can keep updated um platforms such as um, applicant tracking systems can reach out to candidates regularly it can send them updates it can let them know what's going on throughout your process so do leverage your technology they have um, and also seek feedback um, like I say, if you don't know something is wrong, then you can't fix it. Uh, we don't know what we don't know. So it's really important that you do seek feedback from your candidates um, because you want to try and improve. You, you're probably competing, especially with the likes of, of social care, social work, planning, um, building control. Lots of organisations are trying to find the, the, the right candidate. Um, so it's, it's really important that you do um, seek candidate feedback on how you can improve. And also, like I mentioned before, about drawing upon your network. They're the experts, you're the expert, I should say. Um, so it's really important that you do draw on that network. Um, so time is of the essence. So I wish I could give you the, the whole answer of trying to not lose candidate in 10, in 10 days. Um, my biggest um, sort of trick of the trade is to be quick, as it's to, it's to have speed. Um, I think we are all, when we're advertising, we, we tend to wait until the closing date in a, of an advertisement to, to engage with candidates. Um, if you post an advert, for example, today, um, and is someone fantastic applied tomorrow, would you look at their application tomorrow or would you wait until the end of the month? So it's really important that you do, like I mentioned before, put time together. Um, if you have interview dates confirmed, block out your diary as a hiring manager because you want to make sure that you're available. Um, obviously, there's going to be flexibility in that in that as well because things happen. You manage busy services, you manage busy teams. So it's really important that you do try and engage um, quickly. Um, if you see someone good for your advert, reach out to them, let them know the process, say that you're really interested in your CV. You can use technology and automation to do that. Um, it's really positive experience when candidates get feedback. Um, so that should also apply to yourselves when you're actually asking for feedback yourself. So use technology. It doesn't have to be... Um, uh, Ideally, it would be a phone call to that candidate to say, I really like your CV. I'm not going to make a decision until the end of the application process. But it is really important that you do start engaging with people because if you're in, if you're starting an engagement process early, you've got more chance of that candidate sticking around until that closing date. So it is really impor important that you do engage early on. So you can craft personalized messages. You can make phone calls. You can set up... Um, emails to go out through your applicant tracking system. It could just be a, an email directly sent from the manager via Outlook, whatever works for you. But it is really important that you are prompt and responsive. responsive. Um, I find speaking to candidates, they lose engagement after offer stage purely because they might not hear anything. They might know that HR are working really hard in the background to get um, reference checks done. It could be a DBS. It could be um, waiting for um, some 
information. If candidates don't know there's a delay or there's a hold up, for example, DBS che checks can take forever. Um, clearly communicate that, communicate the next steps and what the process is going to be about. And like I said here, maintain regular communication. Um, the worst thing in the world for, from a candidate's perspective, and I, I have seen this many a time, unfortunately, um, if they don't hear anything, they presume you're not interested. Um, and I speak to candidates on a daily basis. Um, there was frustrations in the markets of candidates not getting feedback from um, sending CVs. It can take weeks to get feedback. Um, when I was looking for work a couple of years ago, I, I sent many applications out, didn't hear a, a dicky bird. And I think as a recruiter, it's really disheartening when people have that feedback and it have no feedback, for example, and it's it's something that you you want to try and improve and yes not everybody's going to be successful but it is good practice to send information and let them know they haven't been successful um and don't delay if you see someone fantastic do not delay do today's with my my little motto it's really important that you do um start engaging because good candidates they sometimes are very far and few between there's lots of areas where there's lack of good candidates so if you do see someone really good apply for a job don't delay reach out to them because the worst thing in this world and there's going to be frustrations if they're not available but if they don't hear anything then they sadly would move on um so communicate your values so according to some LinkedIn research, two thirds of UK professionals want to work for companies aligned with their values. Um, when a candidate knows what the company values are, they can assess whether the company is a good fit for them. I think it's really important in today's market that you share your values, you share what's amazing to work with your organization. Um, lots of um, candidates want to know what it's like working for you. Um, I'm going to go on a little bit later in the webinar about some examples of, of, of what we've seen as an organization, um, but it's really important that you incorporate your values in, in job descriptions and, and adverts. Um, I think sharing um, a bit about the department, a bit about who you are as an organization, some great things that are happening within your team, that's all information to drive somebody to your advert, to drive them to want to work for you. And also having some testimonials about some people who work for you is also a fantastic sell. Um, I know when I've hired um, into my teams, it's about speaking and networking, say about who is going to share the journey of working for, for, for us and who's going to have a, a really good experience. So it's really good um, that you share that information in your, in your adverts. And things like your values on your career website, again, use storytelling, use testimonials. It's a really good way to leverage social media and online platforms because um, you'll find that candidates who um, apply for jobs, they're using their mobile phones rather than computers. And um, they're doing it at home after they've had their dinner. Everything needs to be um, mobile friendly. So make sure that your application process is mobile friendly because that's how candidates want to apply for jobs. They want to do it quickly. They want to get as much information as they can to you. Um, there's obviously departments where you need more information, um, things like gaps in employment. You will need um, DBS checks, lots of information like that. But do try and maybe do that to the latter stages because then it, it can engage more candidates wanting to complete and apply for your, your roles. Um, and offer a strong employee value proposition. We're all looking for good candidates. Um, I'm always on the lookout for some really good recruiters, people to work for Jobs Go Public, um, because we want to have good staff. We've got a good story to tell. We do lots of amazing things. And I think it's really important that we share that. So like within your public sector organisations, do share that information um, because people want to work with good organizations and good employers. And if you have a really good experience as a candidate, you will tell your friends, there will be referrals, there will be people who want to work for you. So it's really important that you do have that strong um, proposition. And like I said, candidates are interviewing you as much as you are interviewing them. So just moving on to EVP, um, I'm sure a lot of you will know what an EVP is, um, but in a candidate-driven market, people are assessing their work-life priorities. Um, 
our organization pretty much works from home now. I'm in an office today, um, but that's because my team want to be in an office. Um, so setting a good impression is never been more important. So it's really important that you do share and encapsulate what makes your organization different, what sets you apart from your competitors, um, whether it be down to pay, compensation, pensions, um, it could be down to flexible working. It's the summer holidays coming up. Um, I know I've sort of got probably 70% of my summer holidays covered for my childcare arrangements. However, I work in a flexible business and I know that if I have to, to move away and, and do something, then that's 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 quite all right because I'll I'll do what I have to to make things things up. Um, but also um sharing things about your culture. Like I said, candidate testimonials in your adverts, in your um your careers website, all of that information is really important. Benefits. Um, I think I've, I've talked about this before in a previous session. Um, when you're trying to engage candidates from the private sector, people tend to just focus on the money. They focus on the the um, the salary, whether it be 30k, 25k, 50k, whatever it is. Um, they focus on that. Within the public sector, and we're trying to do as much as we can to share the benefits of working with you. Um, it's about thinking about pension contribution. Pension contribution in the in the in the public sector is is, is huge. Um, things like uh, career development, um, things like blue light cards. These are all benefits that people don't think about. And what we try to do with Jobs Go Public is share the whole package, not the whole reward package, not just down to salary. Because I think from looking at organisations, people look at salary. At the end of the day, they look at salary, how much of that money they're going to take take home. They don't think about the, the huge contribution of their pension and many other benefits that they get working within the public sector. And also um, looking at your um, work environment, what's your team like, what's your business like, sharing good stories, um, sharing stuff that you're doing within your social care teams, um, positive impact that you're having within the community, because that will draw people to want to work for you, because they want to be a part of that. Um, and I think as, as a as, as someone who probably doesn't write adverts or doesn't do this as their day job as a, as a manager of a, a social care team, it can be quite hard and quite um, difficult to try and encapsulate that. But obviously, it's really important that you do share that information because people want to work for good people. Um, so I've got some examples here of, of highlighting um, your um, employer's value proposition. So just to give you a couple um, of examples. So Surrey County Council, um, they have got a um, an, an aspect on that, their business where they're improving quality of life for everybody. Uh, there's a message from their chief executive who out outlines council's passions and ambitions. Um, they've got an entire page dedicated to its inclusion and networks to support people from all backgrounds. And it focuses on things like a apprenticeships, opportunities and advice and testimonials. So they're, they're all really good things that people want to want to see. Um, also, uh, the London Borough of Hampstead as well. Another um, sharing information about being a great place to live and work, um, about championing the borough and looking at career op opportunities there. Um, within their teaching in Hammersmith and Fulham, um, they have a, an example that reads like a handbook outlining everything that need, they need to know. So it's really important that, yes, you can't get everything in an advert, but it does um, help to create some information about what you have and what is um, a really amazing to, to work with you. Um, and also uh, another council who uses their, their campaign site to look at the, the benefits of working in the area, working in the borough, what is good about working for them, what their mileage is, what their cycle to work scheme is, compensation, um, and also about transforming their organisation, which is quite important to share, especially if you've got a journey. Um, I think sometimes people positive focus sometimes on looking at negatives that I think it's really important to share the journey of, of you've reevaluated, you're looking at new things. And I think it's really important to be open and honest with candidates about the position. Um, some of the councils we come, some of the councils, some of the candidates we get, uh, one of the first questions that we get asked as a recruiter is why is the job available? Why are you hiring? Um, it could be the case you've had funding, someone's left. It's really honest. If someone's been promoted within your organization and there's a space um, for a new recruit share the story if someone has moved on because they've worked there for 10 years then again it's it's it we the public sector now um 
I know when I was growing up, my parents had the same job for, for many years. And my mum worked for the council, which is why I know about the public sector. Um, and also my dad was a postman for many years. Those jobs they had for life. Um, now we're in a, in a world where people move on every two or three years and it's it's rare to have people stay forever. So it's really important that you do um, share success of people moving on and, and coming back is, is vitally important because I do see where candidates have, have gone somewhere else and they want to go back to where they are before. So it's really important that you do share those, those stories. So keeping candidates warm. So this is a term that we use as recruiters. We keep people warm um, to make sure that they still engage with that job. Um, like I say, it can be very difficult for you to do it because you are um, busy with your, your day jobs, but it is really a valuable thing to have. Keep checked in, um, have prompt communication. If someone asks you a question or they reach out to you because they wanna know more about your advert, get back to them. Um, try and make sure that you, you you put time in your diary to be engaged with these people because it is really important that they share um, your values. Um, regular check-ins, um, like I said before, DBS checks can take uh, days, they can take, take, take weeks. Um, if you're struggling to get a reference, for example, from a candidate, contact them, let them know, they can chase on their end. Um, provide feedback at all levels. Um, some a, a candidate who never gets any feedback or just gets an email at the end, especially if they've taken some time out to go to an interview or they've pre preferred a, prepared a presentation for you, it's really important that you provide feedback and ask for feedback um, because I think it's really important that you it, it's open communication to channels. Um, a candidate who might not be successful now could be a candidate for the future. A lot of your um, HR departments will be thinking about succession planning. They'll think about people for the future. Um, your managers within your departments will be thinking about, right, if this person goes, who's going to fill that spot? Um, so it's really important that you have open communication that even if a candidate isn't successful now, they could be for the future. And it could be the case of having a, a, a having a sort of a, a chat on LinkedIn, maybe in the future, or having keeping their contact details on file. But I think it really is important that you do um, keep these people engaged, especially if they weren't successful now, another job come up, come up in six months time. Um, and we've had, it, we've had it before where candidates have not been successful, but then another job has come up and people are still available and they, they get those jobs. So it's really important that we do that. Um, share relevant content. content. So when somebody is um, going through the onboarding process or um, whatever, way get them introduced to your team is there an event they can they come along to is there a team meeting they can log into doesn't have to be in person it can be online um is there an event going on is there a team lunch is there a birthday lunch that you can invite someone to it makes people feel engaged um, and that they want to be part of your organization um and also seeking referrals your team or your specialists um who do they know? Who are they sharing the good news stories of your organization? Who do they want to, to work within your business? Seek referrals, uh, maintain a candidate database. I've, I've harped on about keeping candidates warm and making sure that you are um, engaging with people for candidates of the future. It is really important that you do that because I think with any organization, um, I have candidates that I regularly keep in, in touch with because they weren't successful now because they hadn't got the, the right skills at that time, but actually in the future, they could be a perfect person for me. So um, it's really important that you do maintain that, that candidate database. So what do candidates expect? So candidates, um, as a recruiter, we get the warts and all from candidates. We get the, the honest truth on how they have had experiences with their organization and also vice versa. We get the, the truth from managers from, from interviews. So as I always say, there's always uh, three sides to every story, their side, your side and the truth. So it's really important that you do have open communication with, with candidates. So do clear and concise job, job adverts. Um, for example, a job advert title, a job title for your organization could be pretty standard, but it could be completely different to another organization. So use clear text, um, less jargon to be more inclusive. It's really important that we use less jargon so that people will want to apply. Um, 
set clear expectations, expectations for the role. So what's that job going to be doing in uh, the first 90 days? What do you expect from somebody within that post? Um, what is a typical day like um, within that organization? Um, easy mobile friendly applications, like I mentioned, people use their mobile phones to apply for jobs. So make sure that your um, application process is uh, mobile friendly. Um, please ask for feedback. Um, as people, we, we want feedback. Candidates always want to know if they've been um, successful. I think it's really vital for the public sector and other organisations to ask for feedback yourself. So as I did that poll previously before, um, ask feedback. It is really important because it means that you can change your processes if they're not working. Um, and the worst thing to do is to not change because if you don't change, if something's not working and you don't change, it never will change. So it's really important that you do try different things. Um, also outline the full recruitment process. So as I mentioned before, when our interview date's going to be, is there going to be a presentation? I think for candidates, when there is, um, uh, when you're looking at uh, trying to uh, get a, a, a diverse um, people within your organisation, if people don't know a process, then they might be less um they might be hesitant to apply. So outline, if there's going to be, if you know there's going to be a presentation, highlight in that job advert, and then there's going to be no shocks. Um, if you're setting up interviews or doing a telephone interview with a candidate, let them know the full, full process of that process, because I think it's really important. And you don't want to scare candidates, because if I turned up for an interview and was expecting to do a, a presentation that I didn't know about, um, I would be put in a very difficult position. So it's really important that you, you do share that. Um, give flexible interview operate, um, operations op options. Um, yes, you'll have probably blocked out two or three days in your calendar. Um, things do happen. Um, people do drop out. Um, it is unfortunately the nature of the beast, but it is important that you are flexible. Um, and also expect that from candidates to be flexible as well. Um, give uh, candidates an understanding of what the company culture looks like and what their future likes looks like. I think there has been some hesitation in the job market for people moving on. Um, it's the fear of the unknown. So what does your company look like? What's their job going to be like? What's it going to be like working for your business? Whether it be including videos from your chief exec, it could be you talking about your department in a quick 30 second um, minute uh chat online it could be anything um but also it people want to know why it's good for, to work for you and also create a, a great reason to accept the the position um you want to hope if you're putting in all the effort that this candidate accepts give them a reason not to accept that there's no reason why they shouldn't accept your job if you're giving them all the information that you need so it's, it's really important like i said feedback 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 um i'm going to add another poll in there so if we can so there's lots of knowledges then there's lots of knowledge gaps in your team there's been lots of talk within organizations about um looking at how they can ex build their teams and how they can upskill their organization and, and, and upskill their people so it's really important to um think of that so i'm just going to add in the second poll So what knowledge gap in your team would you like to fill? So there's a couple of um, polls, the poll options there. So choosing the right um, agency, writing compelling adverts, uh, tracking, measuring ROI, uh, lots of different things about, I'm going to give um, a couple of, well, a minute or so for them to answer the questions. Okay, so 50-50. Oh. There's a bit, a bit more. It keeps changing. It keeps changing. I need to. I'm going to stop it. I'm going to stop it and share the results because I think it's, um, it's going. So, tracking and measuring ROI is on our recruitment efforts. I think that's massively important. Um, I think when you're doing things like um advertising, when you're um, you want to know where candidates come from, what is the best option, who's the best recruitment agency. You want to know all that information, so it is really important. So thank you very much for sharing that information. And um, what we'll probably do is, is do something similar um, with sharing that information for you.
So um, this is the end of our webinar today. Um, we love the public sector. Um, like I said, I've, I've worked in the public sector for a long time. Um, if you have a story that you'd like to share with us about why you love the public sector, um, we'd love to hear from you. So please drop a line um, to our marketing team. Also, um, feel free to get in touch with me. Um, we are here open to, to have conversations and we're all about making sure that the public sector is championed and, and have the best candidates to work from. So please do um, get in touch if anybody has any questions or wants to know more um, about how we can help and support you. Um, I think feedback is the massive part of today's takeaway. Hopefully you've taken that on, on board and you can implement that into your teams. Um, we gather candidate data all the time. We also we always know what candidates want to hear about. A lot of our presentations that we do um, within Jobs Go Public shares the feedback from candidates. So if anybody wants any of access to any of our data, then please get in touch because we'd love to, to hear from you. Um, so yeah, so get in touch. Anybody has any questions? Um, thank you so much for your time today. I hope you took something in from um, today's session. Um, I'm always happy to give get feedback. So if anybody wants to get in touch with me, then please, please do. Um, or if anybody's got any ideas of what the next webinar we can do, then please do um, let me know. I am going to put in a little... Um, something in the chat box there for you just to give you some information based on our, our webinar today and um, a bit of a tick sheet so please do take that away but that obviously will be sent to you um i just want to say thank you so much for for joining um i hope you found it useful um and thanks again for your support and um yeah get in touch if you if you've got any questions and feel free to reach out to me with any feedback thank you very much and have a great afternoon all right take care